congratulations on this film. It is an absolutely fantastic film, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. It's nice to um, have it out, you know. <laughs> it's a long it's a long haul when you're involved with so many different layers of a project. It's very different than just showing up and, and acting. So it's nice to, um, you know, have it out and released and, and have it in front of people. Yeah. So how did you feel when it was about to be released? Did you get really, really nervous or were you just excited that you were able to get this baby out into the world and show people what you'd been working on? Um, no, I didn't get nervous. I've been working on it for a while. You know, it's one of those things with this project, um, with it being an independent and uh, conceptualizing it, writing it, casting it, directing it, um, acting in it, like, you know, it's involved with all these different layers. Um, so, you know, like even through post-production, I probably watched the movie, like, uh, gosh, I don't even know, thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> so I didn't really have much nervousness when I was getting close to coming. I was like, oh, good. Like, people are going to finally, you know, have an experience with this and, uh, and spend time with it. So hopefully they enjoy it. It's a nice escapism film. Awesome. So where did the original idea come about for you? As you mentioned, you were one of the writers on the film. So where did the idea first start? So... Um, so the film, so the film has two um, kind of strong locations um, that are primarily in it, which is the Hollywood location and the Hollywood scene, and then you have the Latin America part because in the film you have two production companies that are in a race to make the next big mine film, um, and so for the Hollywood part of it, you know they always tell you to write what you know, and so having grown up on set. Um, you know, was, I started acting at seven years old and I've been, you know, in over 40 different, um, movies and television shows and stuff. And so just on set, you know, you hear, uh, the different languages and cause the movie has a lot of people who are sort of trying to con each other. It's the, the name Hollywood.com. So like the con artists one up each other. And so the whole Hollywood thing was inspired by fun characters and wacky experiences and just funny things I've seen throughout life. And then for the Latin America section of it, um, actually my dad, we brought my dad on board. My dad acts in this and uh, we had uh, my dad's world for part of that. So he's a gemologist. He works with gemstones and he spends all this time in Latin America and speaks Spanish fluently. And, um, you know, has these stories about tombs and cursed shade and all of that. And so I always think that, um, you know, even even with like comedy, it's nice to ground projects in realism. And so the fact that um, I have that background, I thought there'd be a fun texture that people are familiar with, with the Hollywood stuff would connect to. And then with his stuff, that there would be realism, you know, with people that were familiar with that, that they would connect to. And so we just took the two worlds, combined them together to make this weird, wacky movie, and um, I would say also Romancing the Stone is a big influence. In Romancing the Stone, they go after the enchanted piece of, um, I think it's an emerald in that one, but um, yeah, so. Yeah, oh, it's absolutely amazing. I love the way that the two worlds come together, but I have to ask, what was it like working with your dad? Like, um... How, how, what was his reaction when you first asked him, did you want to be part of the film? <laughs> it was funny, you know, but what a dream come true. I get to put my dad in a movie. I love it, you know. Um, it was funny, though, because his world's just so different. Um, and, but this was, this was a great, great collaboration. So I was lucky to be able to, you know, convince him to come on board. But he was very funny with some of the stuff. He was like... I don't know about that dialogue. And I said, what do you mean you don't know about the dialogue? He's like, I don't think. He's like, I, w I wouldn't say that. And I was like, well, <laughs> the script's written. Like, we're on set today. What do you mean you wouldn't say that? You have to. I was like, nah, nah, I'm not going to say that one. <laughs> I was like, all right. Well, uh... <laughs> So there are a couple of those moments which were hilarious. Yeah, given his experience too with Latin America, was he able to help with the script writing process and also help with location scouting as well? Yeah, he was he was great with the location scouting um, and the script writing process. Like I was talking about, like bringing in like you know authenticity to these different elements. Um, and 
yeah, he just loves like haggling and, and getting locations and all of that. So that was fun, especially in Latin America. Um, I mean, he was uh, pivotal into, you know, securing all of these different spots and making sure that it was safe to film. Co. Um, we filmed a kidnapping street, a kidnapping scene on the streets of Mexico. Uh, and so, you know, which is sort of like an outlandish thing to do. And, um, yeah, so he really um, kind of greased the wheels for all of that. Awesome. So I have to ask, um, directing, you've directed two short films before this. When did the directing bug bite you? Because, of course, a lot of people here in Australia would know you for your acting. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Blue Crush has a cult following here in Australia because of our surf culture. When did the directional bug bite you? Cool. I love that. Blue Crush favorite movies I've done. Um, so that's cool. It's great. I'm glad people are connecting with it there. I have always been, I've always been interested in directing. Um, you know, acting, you show up and you're, you're a part of this, you know, great uh, larger, larger picture. But with directing and together a project and producing and conceptualizing, like, I mean, you're there from the beginning. Uh, you're in the trenches, and so there's something about, um, you know, coming up with something and then putting all the pieces together and then seeing it all the way through distribution that's very rewarding and satisfying, and it's even kind of like a natural progression um, with acting. Someone once said to me, too, that with acting, um, you know, it's like being a guest at an event. So you show up, you know, you do your part, you leave. Um but the directing is more like hosting your own event. Yep. And, um, you know, so you pick out the guest list, you, you, you do all these different elements, um, and you also bear more of the responsibility of the film overall as a whole. Yeah. So did you spend your time when you have been on film sets and been on television sets kind of watching what the director does and, and learning the craft that way by just observing some of the best directors out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot from different directors. I mean, I've been so fortunate to work with some really great ones and Oscar winners. Um, you know, I've worked with Lee Tamahori, who um, has done James Bond movies, Payne Marshall, who's fantastic, um, Scott Hicks, um, you know, so these Oscar winners and I just, you know, been fortunate in that way. And I've always paid attention to um, what it is that people do specifically with their actors. And I think one of the biggest things that I picked up on, which is so interesting, um, that different actors work in different ways, um, which seems like, oh, okay, that's a common sense. But you still, as a director, need to kind of feel them out and adjust to what's going to work best for them. Because some people are you know, method actors. And so they need to be a character all day long. And they, you know, maybe they even be called by that name. Like, um, you know, like Daniel Day Lewis is known for doing that. I think I read something before that was like my left foot. Um, he had people carry him for like a month, you know, so you have like that type of actor and that's specific to work with. And then you have other actors who just, you know, come in and out of things and are sort of like goofy and like to um, kind of keep like an improv open space going. Yeah. So that's a different personality type. And so I think, you know, kind of feeling that out too, which um, when you feel that out with the actors, it helps you figure out how to approach them, but then also how to best um, help, um, you know, sort of keep them in whatever space that they need to be. So like, you know, if they need to be in this bubble too um, efficiently, then making sure, you know, that hair and makeup isn't dragging them off for too long or like, you know, just like different distractions. And so um, I think that's important for a director as well to just sort of, you know, see who you're working with. Yeah. So the young filmmakers who listen to this show, and we know that we've got a lot of them are probably asking now, how do you feel that out with an actor? Like, how do you... Like, there are people out there that we all know, like Leonardo DiCaprio is a method actor, he likes to stay in character, but how do you feel that out with an actor that you've never worked with before? Um, I think just having an open dialogue, you know, uh, in terms of what makes them feel comfortable, you know, what their background is with training, um, and also, 
you know, hopefully if you're fortunate enough to be able to do a little bit of rehearsal. Another thing that's important to mention, too, is that um, one thing, you know, with working with actors, you start to notice that some people um, need, and so they get better progressively within, um, you know, a few takes of the scene, and then it's where they find their best performance, and other people are right off the bat, and so, you know, their first take, is you know the best performance and after that maybe they slowly dwindle down so that's interesting too because you can look at your actors and if you have a scene with the two and it's a you know big climactic scene in the film um you know you can start you can sort of weigh that out and be like okay so the one who um comes in ready to go on the first take let's start with their coverage you know and then we'll and then that gives the other actor to warm up and then we'll switch around to um the other actors coverage who needed that uh, that extra time also sometimes with um specific scenes too i think that it lends to starting with close-ups and coverage first and then going out to the to the wides um so that way you get like peak performance before people start tiring out yeah. or the opposite you know you can use your wides to sort of have rehearsal and have people um you know get the characters, get the relationship going, and then by the time you close up, they're warmed up. So it's just sort of, you know, being open to um, what's going on in the situation. So having a plan, but still kind of being able to, you know, actively adjust to what's going on with, with your actors. Awesome. So now we're talking about the cast. How did you go about casting this film? Did you already have some actors and actresses in mind when you sat down to write the film? Yeah. So this film, um, this film I cast with all prior acting colleagues, like pretty much everyone in this movie are, are people that I've worked with before. And, um, I knew that with my background as, as an actor, that one of the most important things to me across the board was to, um, be able able to work with really great actors and have that experience as a director, um, to bounce things off of them. So, I basically reached out to my friends, sat down with them, and tried to have discussions about what kind of characters they don't usually get to play, what would be against typecast, what would be really fulfilling, um, and what would just be like something beneficial and fun for them to do uh, if they were to sign on to the movie. And so, you know, within those conversations, we found these really kind of odd, screwball, quirky characters. And um, so that allowed me to get like this awesome cast. Like, so Tom Arnold's in the film. Tom Arnold plays a drug lord named El Jade who runs Tele Mexico. And he's so wacky and perfect for it. He's so funny. Um, we have uh, Devin Retrays in the movie. Uh, Devin Retrays been in everything from Home Alone, where he was Buzz, the older brother with the tarantula, to tick um which is that amazon prime tv show mosaic um the hbo show um like he's just done so much and so he plays this sort of smooth talking producer andy slinick who has all these big chains on him and he's just wheeling and dealing and hustling and so that's different than a lot of characters he gets to play um we have Paige howard who is in adventureland and um She's also on a, the Nickelodeon show Astronauts right now. And so uh, she's very, very sweet. And this, she gets to play this super in your face, crazy producer who's literally on top of the world. Um, you know, so just like these fun things we have um, Billy Bob Thornton and his band, The Box Masters. They do a cameo in the film, and there's animation of them. And uh, they gave us a couple of songs, which is so cool. Brian Krause does a fun cameo in this. He, um, he was really fun to bring on. He was, um, Brian's done so much, but he was um, Leo, the white knight in Charmed, which I just, I grew up watching that show and just like loved the show Charmed. <laughs> but uh, like his role was really funny too, because he just pops in for this cameo, but he plays a director during a casting session. And we had so much fun. I was like, I want you to just go through and like anything that anyone has ever asked you to do that's weird and wacky in an audition. Um, go for it, like throw those lines out. <laughs> and we had so much with them. It was so, it's at the beginning of the film. And so at the beginning of the film, we're setting up the pacing and introducing the characters. So we couldn't hang there for too long. 
um, were his cameo sets because there was just so much uh, material. Like he just he was hilarious. But um, yeah, like one of my favorite ones that he does is he's like, "All right, so I want friends to be in, like very inward." But get out. I want it to be out. So, so do it in and out. Do it again. Like, like they're just like, wait, what? What, what? what kind of direction is that? In and out. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, this movie was fun. Yeah, it was really, really fun. And what was it like for you having to direct and star in the film as well? Is that because I know for some people that is a really big challenge, being able to act in a film while they're directing as well. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? It was one of those things that um, I didn't fully get uh, that much consideration until the first time that I directed myself in a scene, and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> I was like, well, because, you know, a director really, um, a director on set is a bouncing board, too, you know, yeah. making sure, like, they really feel, uh, at least in my opinion, they feel sort of like this custodian of the project who's like, making sure things are kind of on track and aligning and the performances are aligning. So, you know, I, I would, I like acted and I like looked around. I'm like, all right. So and I was like, Oh my gosh. But what I put together, um, that works specifically for me because I have such respect for the actors in the show. Um, and then our cinematographer is awesome. And like, just everybody's really, really good. And so I figured out, um, what beat needed to hit in each scene um, for my character in order to progressively move the narrative along. And I would just communicate that to either the other actor or to the cinematographer and be like, hey, can you look out? And like, I want to hit these three beats and like make sure that I'm hitting them within this. And so that allowed me to keep the schedule moving forward um, on an independent film schedule and an independent budget. Yep. Because <laughs> what I know that other people are able to do, which is so cool, uh, we just didn't have that luxury is other people, when they direct themselves, they'll do playback. And so, you know, they perform and then they watch it and then they critique and adjust and, um, which I think is great, you know, that it's still very much like singular to their vision. But my thought process with that was a, it would take up a lot of time, but then B like, how do you tell the other actor that they don't get to watch playback on their performance <laughs> and they don't get to critique theirs? I mean, I guess you could pull the card like, hey, like, I'm the director, you know, like, you don't get to watch yours. I'll let you know if it's good. But um, I just didn't see myself doing that. So I was like, you know what? Like, work. just rely on the team. Yeah. Yeah. And you also had that whole thing that this was your first feature as well. What was that like stepping up from doing short films to a feature film was there something that really stood out as a big difference for you in that area as well yeah you know um one of the big things for for doing a full feature that i'm very that i think so cool is um short films are awesome um but it's hard to get short films in front of a wide and varied audience i feel that a lot of times um, people who are interested in short films are generally kind of more within the film community. And so I was very excited about doing a full feature because I knew that it would just kind of, you know, broaden um, who you could appeal to and who you should, could show your work to. Um, and so that was, that was cool. And um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know that we have taken up so much of your time today and we thank you so much for chatting to us. And I guess to finish up, what would you like to say to people out there before they sit down this weekend and watch your amazing film? Oh my gosh. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I think that uh, if you want to have a good time, the movie's silly, it's goofy. We've got a great ensemble cast. It takes you all over the place. There's so many locales. There's you know, we film in Mexico, Texas, Guatemala, Arizona, like California. So it's just a goofy, fun adventure that doesn't have anything political in it. There's no sex in it, no violence, no drugs. Like, uh, well, I guess I guess Tom Arnold's loved it. But, you know, everything is like lighthearted and fun. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if you just want to relax, that's the movie for you. Awesome. Well, we thank you so much for coming on the show today, Mika, and we cannot wait to see your next film as well. This uh, this film, I think, has set us all up now to want to see your next film. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. 
Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Not a problem. I'll let you go. Have a great night and uh, we'll check out that new film very, very soon. Cool. You as well. Bye. Bye.